Okay, let me ask you this. Have you ever wished you could make your computer storage both, like, incredibly fast and somehow budget-friendly at the same time? Ah, uh, yeah. That's a classic problem, isn't it? Especially when you get into virtualization. Performance versus cost, it's always a balancing act. It really is. And that's exactly the puzzle we're going to tackle head-on in this deep dive. We're focusing on Proxmox. Right. You know, the popular virtualization platform. Right. And exploring this whole quest to get that perfect mix of speed and affordability in storage. And for you listening, if you like getting insights quickly, you know, without all the fluff, this look at storage solutions should be uh, pretty valuable. Yeah, think of it like this, maybe like premium seats at a concert for the stuff you absolutely have to see up close. Mm -hmm. That's your super fast storage. Okay, yeah. And then there's general admission for everything else. Mm -hmm. Still good, you're still there, but maybe not needing that immediate front row experience. That's a good analogy. That's basically tiered storage, right? Hot data on fast drives, cold data on the slower, cheaper ones. Exactly. Getting the best of both worlds. Performance where it matters, cost savings elsewhere. Makes sense. So our mission today is really to understand why getting this apparently simple tiered storage system working seamlessly in Proxmox has been, well, a bit of a challenge. Mm. And we'll look at the solutions people are using now and maybe what's coming down the line. The sources we looked at really get into this whole pursuit. Okay, sounds good. So where do we start? The appeal of tiered storage itself. Yeah, let's unpack that. Why is this idea so attractive in the first place? Well, fundamentally, it's hitting that sweet spot, like we said. You get the really rapid performance you need for, say, your virtual machines, your databases. The stuff you're hitting constantly. Right, the demanding workloads. But then you keep the costs down for the bulk stuff, your media files, backups, things like that. Speed where you need it, savings where you don't. Seems yeah. obvious. And it has real practical advantages, especially for like home labs or small businesses. We saw people talking online about how they can spin down their big traditional hard drives when they're not being used. Oh, right. Power saving, less wear and tear. Exactly. Like if you pull up a video from your NAS, the system could be smart enough to cache some of it onto a faster SSD temporarily. Okay. Spin down the power hungry HDD. And you get a smooth playback, performance win, power bill win. It's clever. Okay. but. Here's the interesting part, right? Despite these obvious benefits, Proxmox doesn't just have a simple built-in way to do this. That's the core issue, yeah. For all its strengths, Proxmox lacks that native out-of-the-box solution for tiering. Which is weird because this isn't a new idea. Not at all. Our sources pointed out that, you know, commercial platforms like Microsoft Hyper-V, they've had storage tiering since, what, 2012? Wow, okay. A long time. Yeah. And we even saw one user comment they actually switched to Hyper-V for certain things just for this feature, even though they weren't keen on Microsoft generally. That really tells you something about the demand, doesn't it? It really does. So that makes you wonder, given Proxmox is known for being powerful and flexible, what is its current approach to storage then? How does it handle things now? Well, Proxmox VE, the virtual environment, it is super capable. It's open source, built on Debian Linux, rock solid, supports KVM for full VMs, LXC for containers. Right. And storage-wise, it's incredibly flexible. You can set up pools using ZFS, LVM, Ceph, ISCSI, you name it. Lots of options. Tons. Plus features like shared storage for live migration, moving VMs between servers without downtime. Essential stuff. Yeah, and thin provisioning, snapshots, all the good stuff for managing space and data. Okay, so with all that flexibility, why no native tiering? What's the block? It seems to uh, boil down to a couple of main things. ZFS, which is a really popular file system choice for Proxbox users. Yeah, known for being reliable. Very reliable, lots of features, but it just doesn't inherently do tiering like, say, an Enterprise SAN or Hyper-V does. It uses caching instead. Okay, caching. Yeah. How does that work in ZFS? So there are two main types. First, there's the ARC, the Adaptive Replacement Cache, that uses your system's RAM super fast memory to hold frequently accessed data. Like a quick access buffer. Exactly. Then there's L2 ARC, level two ARC. This lets you use an SSD to extend that cache. So data use often, but maybe too big for RAM, can sit on a fast SSD instead of going all the way back to the main, potentially slower storage. Okay, so that sounds like it helps performance. What's the catch? Why isn't that just tiering? Well, the big one we saw discuss is that the L2 IRC, it doesn't persist. It doesn't survive a reboot. Oh, 
So every time you restart the server? Yeah, that SSD cache is empty. It needs to warm up again, learning what data is hot, so you can get a performance dip initially. It's okay. not a reliable, always on fast tier in the same way. Got it. Less strategic, more reactive. Kind of. And then there's something called a special VDEV in ZFS. Okay. This lets you put metadata, like the data about your data, and optionally small file blocks onto fast drives, usually SSDs. It can speed up certain operations, like directory listings or scrubs, which checked data integrity. So it helps specific things. Right. But again, it's not automatically moving whole chunks of data between fast and slow tiers based on how often you use them. It's optimizing parts of the file system, not acting like a true tiered pool. Okay, so these are more like performance boosters within a storage pool, mm -hmm. not the automatic data shuffling across different types of drives that people seem to want. Exactly. And that's where you see the user frustration or maybe just desire really clearly online. People want to just throw in their drives super fast, NVMe, regular SSDs, big spinning hard drives. I have Proxmox manage it all as one logical thing, yeah. moving data intelligently. Precisely. A single seamless pool where the system figures out what goes where, they express surprise, it's not simpler, especially when they look at something like Hyper-V doing it since 2012. Right, that sentiment comes through a lot. Yeah. Okay, so we get the appeal, we see the current ZFS limits. Let's dig into why this is so tricky for Proxmox specifically. What are the main hurdles to implementing this? Well, one big factor is just the sheer technical effort and resources needed. You know, some users in the community pointed this out quite rightly. Building a really solid, reliable, tiered storage system isn't trivial. It's complex software engineering. Absolutely. Companies like VMware or Microsoft, they have large, dedicated teams, big budgets, focused purely on storage features, often tightly integrated with their own proprietary systems. Whereas Proxmox operates differently. It's open source. Exactly. There's the core Proxmox company, Proxmox Server Solutions, but they also rely a lot on community contributions. Development priorities have to be set. Maybe they're focused more on high availability or Ceph integration, which we can talk about. So it's partly a resource allocation thing. Seems likely, yeah. And then there's the underlying tech itself. We mentioned ZFS wasn't really designed with this kind of dynamic data movement in mind. Its focus was elsewhere. Yeah, more on data integrity, simplified administration maybe. Adding true automatic tiering to ZFS itself would probably mean a massive overhaul or maybe even looking at a whole different file system. Both are huge projects. What about those DIY workarounds people try? Like uh, mergers you mentioned. Ah, yeah, the DIY route. I mean, technically you can use tools like mergers to create a kind of unified view across different drives or file systems. Like gluing them together virtually? Sort of. Yeah. And you could maybe try scripting data movement between them. But it gets complicated fast. It's not officially supported by Proxmox, not integrated. Likely fragile. Well, we saw one person share their experience saying it wasn't very reliable. Yeah. And finding clear instructions was tough. So, yeah, probably not a practical fix for most people. Okay. And what about Ceph? That came up. Doesn't it have tiering? It does, yes. Ceph is a distributed storage system designed to run across multiple servers. Proxmox integrates with it pretty well. Right. And Ceph does let you define different storage pools, say an SSD pool and an HDD pool, and set up rules to automatically move data between them based on usage. So wow. if you have a multi-node Proxmox cluster. And multiple physical servers working together. Then Ceph can definitely provide that tiered storage solution. Okay, but there's a but. Isn't there? There's a pretty big but for many users. Ceph is uh, quite resource intensive. It likes RAM, it likes CPU, it likes network bandwidth. It needs a decent amount of hardware. Yeah. And setting it up and managing it is more complex. It's often considered overkill, frankly, for a single Proxmox server, which is a really common setup for home labs or small businesses. So powerful, but maybe too complex and demanding for simpler setups. That's generally the take, yes. No. The overhead can outweigh the benefits in those cases. All right, so given these challenges and the limits of Ceph for single nodes, what kinds of creative workarounds has the Proxmox community come up with? They tend to be pretty resourceful. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The community is always finding ways. The most basic approach is just manual segregation. Meaning you, the user, just consciously decide, okay, my VM disks go on the fast SSD pool. My media library goes on the big HDD pool. You manage it yourself. You manage it yourself. Simple, requires no special software, but it's all manual. You have to actively place things and maybe move them later if needed. No automation. Okay. Basic but functional for some, I guess. Yeah. What about more advanced tricks? Well, one user detailed using Linux's built-in device mapper DM setup. 
This is a really powerful kernel framework. Allows low-level storage manipulation. Exactly. You can stack block devices, combine them, modify them, so you could potentially create custom layers, maybe RAID on HDDs, topped with an SSD cache layer, presenting it as one device, trying to emulate tiering. Sounds powerful, but also complicated. It, very. It requires deep Linux storage knowledge. And you have to monitor it carefully because Proxmox itself might not fully understand the underlying setup if a drive fails, for example. Yeah. Potential for things to get confusing. Yeah, definitely sounds like expert territory. Not for your average user, no. And then, just for sheer novelty, there was that user who ran ZFS over Google Drive. Wait, what? Yeah. Using Circlone to mount Google Drive as a block device, apparently, with some kind of write-back cache, they actually said it worked surprisingly well, even handled network drops, got good compression. That's wild, but practical? Not really. Even they admitted it was more of an experiment. Fun, but not a recommended daily driver. Okay, so lots of ingenuity, but maybe not mainstream solutions. Yeah. What about commercial options? Are there third-party tools that plug into Proxmox? There are. Companies like BlockBridge offer storage solutions that integrate natively with Proxmox. They're often all-flash, high-performance. Aimed more at enterprise. Generally, yes. Blockbridge, for instance, boasts features like data reduction, encryption, and users reported much lower write latency compared to something like Ceph. Okay. Any others? Store pools, another name that came up. They seem to focus on letting you manage storage tiers right within the Proxmox GUI, supporting things like VM migration and snapshots across those tiers. So these sound like they offer exactly what people are asking for, integrated managed tiering. Pretty much, yeah. They seem to deliver the functionality. What's the catch then? The catch, predictably, is cost. These are commercial, often enterprise-focused solutions. The price tag can be way out of reach for home lab users or small businesses on tight budgets. Right, so they demonstrate it's possible, but not necessarily accessible for everyone using Proxmox. Exactly. They highlight what a truly integrated native solution could look like, which just emphasizes the gap for many users right now. Which brings us back to what those users actually want. If you boil it down, what are the core desires here? It really comes down to simplicity, you know? Ease of configuration. People want to set up tiered storage, ideally through that nice Proxmox web interface, without needing a PhD in Linux storage. Click, click, done. Kind of, yeah. They want that balanced, good performance for the important stuff, reliability, without breaking the bank or spending weeks tinkering with config files. And the frustration comes when they compare it to... To systems like Hyper-V, where it's just there, a checkbox, maybe a simple setup wizard, that's when you hear that comment, like one user said. Proxmox is so flexible it can do anything, but sometimes that flexibility makes the simple things harder than they need to be. Interesting point. The adaptability is a double-edged sword sometimes. It can seem that way for specific features like this. And users are also thinking about redundancy and access patterns. They want, say, their critical VM operating systems on fast mirrored SSDs for speed and safety. While well, maybe their large media archive can live on bigger, perhaps less redundant HDDs. Exactly. One user laid out these key questions. What data is it? How often do I access it? How critical is its protection? Without native tiering, you have to answer those yourself and then build the storage layout manually. Right, the system doesn't help you automate that based on the answer. Not automatically, no. So looking ahead, what are the potential paths forward? How could mm -hmm. Proxmox actually deliver this kind of breakthrough? Well, there are a few possibilities being discussed. One is definitely diving deeper into Ceph integration, making it easier to use. Yeah, focusing on simplifying the setup and management, especially for those single node or small cluster scenarios. If they could make Ceph less intimidating, maybe with better GUI wizards. Its existing tiering features become much more accessible. That's the idea. That could be a really viable path for a lot more users. Okay, what else? Another thought is partnerships. Maybe Proxmox could work with some of those third-party vendors like BlockBridge or Storepool. To offer maybe elite version? Perhaps. Something more streamlined or affordable, tailored for the typical Proxmox home small business user? That's another possibility. And what about changing the underlying file system tech? That's the other angle. Could ZFS itself be enhanced? Or maybe Proxmox could look at adopting a different file system that does have native tiering. BTRF sometimes gets mentioned it has some experimental tiering stuff. But it's less mature than ZFS? I'm generally considered so, yeah. Less battle-tested in the same way. Mm. But any of these file system level changes would be a huge undertaking. Significant development work needed either by the core team or the community. So no easy answers there. Not really. 
Which is why, for now, users are sticking with the workarounds we talked about, each with its own pros and cons. This whole quest for tiered storage, it feels like part of a bigger picture, doesn't it? I think so, yeah. It really reflects this growing demand for features you'd typically associate with expensive enterprise systems, but within open source platforms. People wanted the best of both worlds, open source freedom and flexibility, but also enterprise grade convenience. Exactly. Proxmox has already shaken up the virtualization market massively by being a powerful, affordable alternative. But addressing these kinds of user pain points, like the storage tiering gap, is probably pretty crucial for them to keep that momentum going. And the community's involvement is key. Absolutely. The fact that the community is so actively discussing it, experimenting, trying to find solutions that shows the platform's strength and potential, even if the perfect solution isn't there yet. It definitely highlights how invested users are. For sure. So for now, users need to weigh their options, manage things manually, learn complex Linux tools, maybe invest in Ceph if it fits, or look at those commercial solutions if the budget allows. That ideal, native, easy to use tiered storage, it's still on the wish list. But the hope is definitely alive, fueled by that community innovation. Seems that way. So we kicked this off, asking if you could really have both speed and affordability in your storage. Within Proxmox today, what's the verdict? The verdict is, sort of, you can achieve it, definitely, but it's not yet a seamless, fully integrated push button experience out of the box. You can get there through manual setup or using Ceph in the right context or maybe those third party tools. But it requires effort or specific right. circumstances. Right, optimization is possible, but the truly effortless integration many users seem to crave. That's still the goal, not the current reality for everyone. Okay, interesting. So wrapping this up and thinking about all the ingenuity in the Proxmox world and how storage tech keeps changing, mm -hmm. what do you think is the most likely path forward for truly seamless tiered storage in Proxmox? Is it going to be better, simpler Ceph, or maybe a big community push on ZFS or even a new file system? Or is it something else we haven't even considered? Mm -hmm. It's definitely yeah. something for you, the listener, to think about, maybe even check out some of the forum discussions online. Absolutely. It's a space to watch. It's an ongoing journey. And yeah, the potential within Proxmox is still really exciting.